blessing. The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions. Felix Trinidad, Fernando Vargas, the two best junior middleweights in the world in a potential fight of the year showdown. I don't think you can order great fights from a catalog, but this one we may have. Big left hook by Trinidad and Vargas is stunned. Vargas is stunned and down. Upper, you got a proper move. Down goes Tito. Fernando has gotten himself back into the fight. Don't let him get a breather. Don't give him a second chance. He takes a low blow. And a one point deduction for Vargas. This is the strength of both fighters going at each other. We need a round. The last round. You're going to get more beating in this round. Out or he's lost this fight. Down goes Fernando again. The pride of Puerto Rico stands on top of the boxing world after a performance for the ages. This battle proved one of the greatest matches ever between two Latino champions. So stay tuned now for our HBO replay of Trinidad Vargas. From the Mandalay Bay Events Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, the showdown of the year between unbeaten Felix Trinidad of Coupe de Alto, Puerto Rico, and unbeaten Fernando Vargas of Oxnard, California. On a chilly weekend in Vegas, an ecstatically enthusiastic crowd poured onto the south end of the strip in anticipation of what could be the most exciting fight in a long time. Little could they have realized how explosive it would be. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley, along with George Foreman and Larry Merchant. We welcome you with great excitement to this rebroadcast of the brilliant battle, December 2, 2000, at the Mandalay Bay Events Center in Las Vegas, between Felix Trinidad and Fernando Vargas. It had been anticipated and hoped for as a possible fight of the year in boxing. It lived up to every expectation and indeed exceeded them all. And Larry Merchant, we hoped for a great fight. Most people predicted a great fight. We got a great fight. Why? Because we demanded it and because we needed it. And also because, as Vargas put it succinctly and best before the fight, he don't run and I don't run. I saw it as a fight between a deadly, aggressive spider, the spidery Trinidad, against a well-armored, tough beetle, the spider one. But we saw what the fight was about in the very first round, when shockingly, Vargas, for the first time in his career, went down and went down again, and somehow survived. Talent versus toughness. Talent and toughness in the end beat toughness. Yeah, as Trinidad firmly and emphatically stamped himself as the winner in the closing rounds after that stunning first round exploitation of Vargas, George Foreman, like many, many boxing experts, you in the days before the fight picked Vargas to win because you thought he would fight a controlled boxing match. Instead, he wound up standing in front of Trinidad and trading with him through much of the fight. Why? Well, I said all along this was Vargas' fight to lose. He lost because he stopped moving his feet and kept his, and started moving his body, so to speak. You gotta move your feet at all times. He knew how to do that better than anyone I've seen in that weight class. 
He was devastated by a devastating puncher because he forgot to move his feet. Well said. A devastating puncher, and that's what to look for in Felix Trinidad from beginning to end through this 12-round war. Let's go to it right now. The fabulous fight between Trinidad and Vargas that, as I said at the beginning, lived up to every expectation. Tale of the tape for Felix Trinidad and Fernando Vargas. Five-year age difference, Trinidad still young. Vargas, in Trinidad's words, a baby, but what a baby. Height, one inch advantage for Trinidad. Reach, equal, weigh in, equal. Tonight, equal as they enter the ring at 164. Punch stat numbers, Larry. What the numbers show is that Vargas is a busier fighter than Trinidad usually. But fighters who fight Trinidad have to be concerned about the incoming, and they tend to be a little less busy than they are against other fighters. Power shots, the same kind of numbers in Vargas's favor. We'll see if he's willing to throw that many against a fighter as lethal as Trinidad. Rules at the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Felix Trinidad ferocious Fernando Vargas fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. It's not a long way from Oxnard, California to Las Vegas, Nevada. Fernando Vargas did not fly into Vegas for the biggest assignment of his boxing life, but rather rolled in in his new 30-foot customized SUV. It's basically a rolling disco. And with an eye toward enhancing his already stylized image, Vargas now presents yet another dramatically produced ring entrance. Now, this is supposed to be a Mayan temple, Aztec warriors. It looks like the famous march in the opera Aida being set up here. <laughs> First knockdown of the evening, down comes the wall. You know, Fernando Vargas was born, raised, educated, trained in Oxnard, California, fought for the U.S. in the Olympics, but he feels very powerfully about his heritage as a Mexican. That's why he chose the Mexican national anthem. That's why he chose this entrance. since the emergence of this young man. Just 
just imagine the historic threshold that Vargas can cross tonight. By tomorrow morning, he could be one of the two or three biggest superstars in the sport without yet having celebrated his 23rd birthday. This is like a guy who hits a home run and walks around the bases. He's in no rush to get in the ring yet. member of the 1996 American Olympic team, one of the youngest professional champions ever. 20 fights, 20 wins, 18 knockouts, decisions against Winky Wright in his toughest battle and his weakest moment, Ike Quarte in his most brilliant performance, and KOs against all the other opponents. Fernando Vargas is in the ring. The chant of Tito Tito builds in earnest as the Puerto Rican contingent waits for their superstar to emerge. After all these years and all these fights, Jim, I still occasionally get chills at this walk-in, which is so distinctive to prize fighting. It's almost medieval, the way these warriors come to the ring to face each other naked. Well, I think, aside from the last 30 minutes before the Kentucky Derby, and the last 30 minutes before the Indianapolis 500, there is no pageantry like the pageantry you'll see at every championship fight. And tonight is something special. One thing I've noticed, Jim, all week long doing interviews and so on. Trinidad, was, his face is almost opaque, almost completely expressionless. All of a sudden, here he is, animated, smiling. He's like a musician ready to perform at Carnegie Hall. George Foreman, you've made this walk do moments like this bring back intense memories for you? Yeah, it's the kind of moments, though, that you just can't catch up with. It happens so quick that if you think about it, you're in the ring and out of it before you can even realize it happened. So it's not something that can happen to you now on the way up to the ring at all. It's too quick. Lifetime happening too quick. What kinds of things do you try to focus on as you walk in? Well, you really did turn into the entertainer because it's such a long walk. There's music. And this is your moment of entertainment. It where you really want to put on a show, it could be laughing, smiling, or real mean. This is that moment. And the record for Felix Tito Trinidad, well known to most boxing followers. 38 wins, no losses, no draws, 31 spectacular knockouts for Tito. And now let's go to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the spectacular Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, as it's time for the much anticipated featured bout of the evening brought to you by Don King Productions and Main Events in association with the Mandalay Bay, TVKO and Budweiser, the undisputed king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the following organizations. The World Boxing Association President Gilberto Mendoza, 
Supervisor Gilberto Mendoza Jr., the International Boxing Federation President Hiawatha Knight, Supervisor Mahassan Scott, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners Amy Ayub, Glenn Carano, Dr. Flip Omansky, and Dr. Luther Mack. The executive director is Mark Ratner. Introducing to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside from Johannesburg, South Africa, Stanley Christodoulou. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Dwayne Ford, and from Kent, Washington, Glenn Hamada. And the referee in charge of this bout, working in this, his 31st world title bout, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA and IBF 154-pound Unification Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's time for the bout you've all been waiting for. Live from the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing green trunks with black trim, hailing from and proudly representing Coupe Alto Puerto Rico. He weighed in at the limit of 154 pounds even. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 38 wins, no losses, 31 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making his 19th appearance in a world title bout. Here is the explosive two-time world champion, the current undefeated WBA super welterweight champion of the world, introducing Felix Tito. across the ring, ready to fight on my left in the blue corner. He is wearing white trunks with red and green trim. He proudly represents his hometown of Oxnard, California. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 154 pounds. He also is undefeated at 20 wins, no losses, with 18 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the sixth defense of his title. Please welcome the hard-hitting, undefeated, IBF junior middleweight champion of the world, introducing a ferocious Fernando. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay Nady, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing scheduled. Any questions? 12 rounds. Obey my you commands. Know, I don't know. Let's go to work. Follow up with the Baja. Those picking Trinidad are going with the logic of a sensational performer with an impeccable record. Those picking Vargas are going with a gut feeling about his toughness, a young man with the look of a champion. Your head or your gut, which one is right? Trinidad can only go to the well so many times. Getting knocked down early is just, you can't just get up all the time. He better protect himself. Six different times in his career, Trinidad has been down in the early rounds. All six times, he got up to win. Vargas lands a left jab against an off-balance Trinidad to start off the action. The That's younger what you fighter want. stepping out to jab. Go ahead, George. That's what you want to do. You got to show Trinidad, first of all, I'm not afraid of you. Then you got to back it up, though. Big left hook by Trinidad, and Vargas is stunned. Vargas is stunned and down. And you know how stunned he is? Because he didn't take the full count. He got up too quickly. That's Sen what I said. The left hook. Trinidad can't go to the wheel. He's not playing around now. Second knockdown for Trinidad. He's the one who said it would be a quick, dominant, knockout performance. 
This is not what any expert come, come expected. You okay? Okay. But this Close. is what Felix said he'd do. No three knockdown rule in effect. Vargas attempts to grab and hold, then backs away again. Manages to duck a couple of punches. Seemingly getting his legs back under him now. He was not prepared early for the quickness of Vargas's hands. Oh, Trinidad's hands. Sorry, Trinidad's hands. Vargas is starting to stand and fight flat-footed. That's not what I expected of him. All the talk about how Trinidad goes down early, and suddenly Vargas is down twice in the first minute and a half of the fight. So now the younger fighter trying to regain his senses and get out of the first round. He's showing real composure and poise in a, in a crisis situation here, George. This is the first one he's been in, and you didn't want it to be the first time he'd run into some adversity. Vargas kind of pushes Trinidad away with the left of the body. Trinidad looking and looking, trying to find an opportunity to land one more big left hook. Trinidad normally the best finisher, finisher in his weight class. He didn't finish Vargas off, and I don't know why. Well, he's usually finning off, finishing off a fighter whom he's punished to the body for seven or eight rounds. This is an unusual situation. Now he got hurt by a right hand. Vargas chopped him on the side of the head with a good right hand. Trinidad looking very sharp with his punches in the first round. Vargas just missing with another straight right cross, and now Fernando definitely has his legs back. He better use those legs. You don't want to stand in front of a puncher like that. He's going to make it out of round one, but what a perilous round one it was for the young star from Oxnard, Felix Trinidad, with an early two-knockdown statement. And Vargas goes to a neutral corner, not to his own corner, after that round. It's but a wonder that, he can go anywhere. That was some gutty performance by Vargas. Larry, a look at the knockdowns. Stunned early in the fight. He has never been down as a professional prize fighter. Never been in the ring with somebody as deadly and quick as Tito Trinidad. And Trinidad did everything he could to finish it right then and there. Give Vargas credit for showing some stability and maturity in a situation he had never experienced before. Big left hooks doing the damage for Trinidad in round one. Vargas came back and managed to land 14 punches in the round despite being down twice. And now Vargas tries to rake Trinidad with a right hand. George pointed out that a chopping right by Vargas in the last minute of round one caught Trinidad flush on the cheek. Trinidad Nance uses some good experience. He was able to slip the left by Vargas and come up with a left hook that lands the first knockdown. That's experience, that's bobbing, that's weaving. Trinidad looking quicker, stronger, and better balanced than ever in the first two rounds of a fight. This is the first time I've seen him show some aggression early on like this. Well, they told us for years that he's having so much trouble making 147 pounds that it damaged him going into fights. At 154, he has indeed looked more comfortable on his feet. Vargas is not backing up like you would expect him to do at this point. He stands in the middle of the ring, tries to get an aim, and then back away. Well, that he's was one of the big it. questions that hung over the fight. Would Vargas trade with Trinidad? And almost everybody felt that would be a mistake that the young fighter probably wouldn't make. He has Trinidad going in a circle away from him. Right hand lands for Trinidad. Trinidad is mixing it up, uses the jab down to the stomach, then back to the head. He's actually boxing Vargas. Vargas with a left to the body. Left hook to the body is a major weapon for both fighters. And if the fight goes some rounds, you wonder who will get that weapon going with regularity. It's going to take a couple of rounds if it goes that for Vargas to get his balance back. Another left he hand land flush for Trinidad, and Vargas is stunned again. Vargas having trouble handling Trinidad's power. 
But he yeah. naturally gets out of the way of those punches. How he does it, you don't know. Right hand lands for Trinidad. Vargas pops back with a left. But Vargas still looks unsteady whenever Trinidad lands upstairs. Trinidad's got power, and you don't want to be in exchange with a guy with that kind of power. And that's what Vargas is doing, making the mistake of punching with a very good puncher. Yeah, but George, he's having no success standing outside because of the quickness of Trinidad, so he has to try to get inside his range a little no, bit. No, 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 he needs to stay away for a couple of rounds and get his legs back under him. That's what he should be doing. There was a brutal body shot by Trinidad that set up this assault, but Vargas is able to duck and slip and avoid most of the punches. The good thing about this marathon runner is that he's sprinting too early. Trinidad. Big right hand by Vargas. Catches Trinidad's attention. Felix comes straight forward. Now Vargas spins Trinidad after a left hook missed. And this is one of the first times you've seen Trinidad try to sprint early like this. Trinidad holding on to Vargas' right arm as Vargas whacked away with the left. Best rally of the fight for Fernando to punctuate round two. And the young Mexican-American fighter flashes a smile as he goes back to his corner. <laughs> Everything is fine. Tranquilo. It's easy. Just take it easy. We gotta be calm. The fight is ours. The fight is in our favor. You don't have to do too much. Here's another look, Larry, at the jab by Trinidad that yeah. seemed to wobble Vargas. Well, he called him a baby, and so far he's uh, done everything except diaper and powder him. But late in the round, the baby started to yowl. There's a little blood on the side of Trinidad's, the right side of Trinidad's eye. So that baby can scratch. We're off to some start. It could have been a first round knockout. But now Vargas has a chance to write a fascinating script. Trinidad stands on the, the ball of his right foot like a track star ready to take off. A track runner on your mark, get set. You don't want to be in front of a guy like that. He's in position to, re to reel a right hand off on you. You want to get him back on his heel so he's off balance. Vargas stops the Trinidad left with a left of his own. Trinidad with a long right hand that wobbles Vargas back again. Like I said, you can't stand in the front of a guy when he's standing on the ball of his right foot like that. He's ready to take off on you and go. Some of us really expected Vargas to be at angles and not right in front of Trinidad like this. It looks as though, after having gone down twice in the first round, Vargas is anxious to step back and make a statement of his own. He yeah, may have been gulled into fighting the once wrong Once a guy fight. knocks you down like that, you just got to get up and fight him. Otherwise, you're going to be running all night. And that's what Vargas, he's taking the chance, but he's doing as much. He's got Trinidad boxing. And there's a big left hook upstairs by Vargas which momentarily halts Trinidad, but Felix is relentless. He keeps coming and keeps firing hard with both hands. As I said earlier with Vargas, he's naturally off balance for uh, Trinidad. You have him in, oh, he jabs to the body, which is good for Trinidad. Can set up some of the later stuff upstairs. And Vargas is gonna have to throw that right hand before he hooks Trinidad because you don't wanna be hooking with a good left hooker like that. Now Vargas lands a jab and a straight right hand. Misses with a right hand there. Vargas beginning to put punches together in combination. But Fernando is not yet elusive. He's in front of Trinidad and he's been taking too many punches. Oh, right good there. right hand by Vargas. Right on the chin, perfect shot. But he's standing still again with a guy on the ball of his right foot. And he takes a left hand as a result of it. You don't want to throw, you want to throw your right hand oh, because you throw your left hand. with Trinidad's right eye. And now Vargas sees a chance and bangs away with the left while Trinidad holds on to his right. What if, what if Hard right hand by Trinidad. Into the right eye of Trinidad. Apparently he's clear now. Two more chopping right hands by Trinidad landed there. Not having the same effect on Vargas, though, that they did in the first round. 
The young fighter seems to have gotten his feet under him. He takes a low blow, and referee Jay Nady is going to give him a chance to recover. And if I'm Fernando Vargas, I would use all five minutes. There you go. Vargas has done a good job. If you want to tell a young man After five minutes or hire a young man in your office, this is the way you want to tell them a young, young people can do. They can take care of a job. Now, Trinidad's had so much momentum in these first three rounds. Vargas has a chance now to at least interrupt that momentum. Here's a look at the low oh, blow. Oh, that's right there on the counter of the side of the hip. That hurts. That was a serious low blow. And a real mistake in terms of the tide of the fight, in terms of giving an opponent who was dazed earlier a chance to fully recover. Over across the ring, Vargas's promoters, Kathy Duva and Gary Shaw of Main Events, are standing up and holding up five fingers apiece. They're saying to Fernando, use all five minutes. Can you imagine a woman now? Given instructions. Hey, Kathy knows the sport as well as anybody. She holds up five fingers again. Trinidad's looking over at his dad. Kathy Duva, standing across the ring, keeps motioning Vargas back into the corner. Now Fernando wants to come out and fight. I really think it was Fernando uh, Vargas who had the momentum going before the stop. Third round comes to a close. And trash talk from Vargas to Trinidad. There is Olivia Chavez, mother of Fernando Vargas, and right now, a nervous woman. You gotta you got use those uppers. Come inside. Be, be lively. Be alert. And do some boxing. Uppers. Hey, he's only throwing you wide punches. You, you got a bobber move. Okay, put this Put that icing on me. Fight. Larry Merchant. Well, in the corner. Tito got a slap in the face from his father, but you can see there that jab got into the eye, but Trinidad appears to be all right, and Vargas appears to be working himself into the fight. And George Foreman, CompuBox numbers agree with you that Vargas had the momentum before the interruption. He landed 23 punches out of 57 to 19 out of 29 for Trinidad in round number three. Harold, how'd you score the first three rounds? Okay, Jim, 29-26, two rounds to one, Tito Trinidad. You gotta give him two extra points, and down goes Tito on a big left hook. The score of the fight okay. was before it just changed. Here comes Trinidad to try to follow up. I mean, check it, Vargas to try to follow up. Well, Vargas has said that if he got Trinidad in trouble, he wasn't going to let him off the hook. He got another low blow. Second foul of the fight for Trinidad, and we'll see if Nady will take a point away. A point deduction could be critical, and it is. And right now, Jim, it's a three-point round for Vargas, which equalizes the three-point round like that Trinidad got in the first round. Oh, you got all you want. Did somebody say it was going to be a great fight? <laughs> I well, I don't think you can order great fights from a catalog, but this one we may have. Let's take a look at the low blow. George, tell me how much this hurts the fighter. No, he's been hit low already, so it's already tender around the body. It's going to hurt him a lot, and it's going to affect his stomach also, so he's going to be in trouble for the rest of Will the fight. Will it limit performance the it's rest of the fight? It's going to limit a lot of movements now because it's hurt. He's planted the punches. Should he, re should he retaliate, George? No, no, not at all. You don't want to do that. If you believe you can win, stay fair. All right, this time, Fernando Vargas is not getting the five-minute call from Gary Shaw and Kathy Duba across the ring because they're cognizant of the fact that Fernando was on the upswing and had knocked Trinidad down prior to this low-blow interruption. Well, what do we have? Uh, three and a half rounds. We've had three knockdowns. Two, major, say, two major fouls. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, they can fight 25 rounds.
Tigers got to be careful with the swelling. Trinidad Corner has always done a good, uh, good job of keeping his swelling down. All right, Fernando's ready to fight again. So here they come. Round four continues. Big left to the body by Trinidad. Vargas, Vargas was reaching for an uppercut. Vargas Corner told him to go with the uppercut, but you just can't bring it all the way up. You got to bring it to him. That's the uppercut. You can't force the uppercut. You've you got to make the opponent him. come to you. I still think that Trinidad is having a little trouble with his right eye. I think it's a little swollen. I think you're right on the money there, Larry. And He's I think Trinidad a... benefited from the delay for the low blow. He's got to jab and make Trinidad bend down and then throw the uppercut. You got to make him go down. Don't just throw the uppercut while he's in the heights. The punch, which has done damage for both fighters, is the left hook. Trinidad knocked Vargas down on two big left hooks in the first round. Vargas retaliated here with a left hook of his own. There's a straight right hand for Fernando. Felix backing straight up. Takes another left hook. Vargas should stay on Trinidad's right side. Stay on that right side. Uh, Trinidad is doing good with his uh, left hook, but the right hand is hesitant because he needs to keep it up to protect his eye. So Vargas does well if he stays right on Trinidad's right side. It appears to me, George, that Vargas has been able to now measure the quickness of Trinidad's hands. He's not getting hit with the kind of clean punches he was early in the fight. No, he's ducking and slipping and finding opportunities. This looks a little bit more like what he was able to do against Quarte. Well, he's made Trinidad now to stop and think for a second. And when you do that, that's what you want a puncher to do is be on the alert. Try to outbox me rather than outpunch me. And that's what Trinidad is trying to do, outbox the champ now. No longer does Vargas wobble every time Trinidad hits him upstairs. Fernando has gotten himself back into the fight through four rounds. Take a deep breath. Everything's all right. Your eye's okay. Don't worry about your eye. Everything's okay. Okay. Tito, we got to fight. And inside his guard, Tito. Are you listening to me? You keep your hands up and then make sure you, you put your left hand in front. Keep your hands up. Here's the knockdown, Larry. Here's the left hand that knocked Tito down. And from what I've seen in the corner, they're telling Tito that his eye looks okay, but it doesn't look okay. It looks bloodshot. He's been there before. That's the most amazing thing about Trinidad. All of this has happened to him before. Now both of them have had to come back from adversity. Story of two fights so far. First two rounds by CompuBox numbers. Trinidad landed 37 punches, but only 19 for Vargas. Last two rounds, Vargas lands 47, the only 28 for Trinidad. In round four, Vargas with a 15 to four edge in power shots. So coming into the fifth round, the younger fighter has for the moment taken over the action. And now Vargas is starting to use his legs a little bit. He, he hits and then steps to the side. Ducking and slipping, staying at angles, fighting the way he was supposed to fight. And he's doing it naturally. These are things you just can't teach a guy when he get hurt. It has to be there inside. What a test of Vargas's fortitude in the first round when he was totally stunned by the two vicious left hooks that Trinidad put him on the canvas with. What a comeback by Vargas in rounds three and four. Now Trinidad is spreading his right leg a little far out there. It's not on the mark as much as it was earlier. That's what you want him to do, spread that leg. What Good left mean? hook by Vargas. What do you mean by on the mark, George? Well, he stands just like the track, uh, track run on your mark, you know, on the heel ball of your right foot. He can get off the right hand, but when he spreads it and put it flat, you can get him because he's not ready to punch you back. He's back on the right foot now. It's, it's up again now. Left hook to the body by Vargas, close to the belt line. At this time, Trinidad should be es establishing his left jab a little bit more. He has the better in the reach. Throw that jab. Don't be afraid to jab. 
as he came out with the jab in the first round, and that's what set up the power punching display. Yeah, and he's starting to abandon his left jab, which he shouldn't have done. Since then, he's been slugging, and Vargas has been able to adjust. And Vargas has, has established his body punching now. Once you establish that you can hit a, a man with a body punch, you're good. You know, now Vargas starts to get his jab going, and, and he, double left hook. And he seems to be in control now of the situation right here in the fifth round. Vargas seems remarkably calm for somebody who's been through what he's already been through in the fight. Once again, Trinidad is flat foot on that right foot, and then Vargas should take advantage of it and attack. These are the things that your corner has to look at. And there's the uppercut, and Eduardo Garcia was asking Vargas to throw. Vargas popping his jab whenever Trinidad steps into range, interrupting Trinidad's assault. Trinidad missing with the jab too far away. Then Vargas stops. After he backs up a moment, he stops. That throws Trinidad off because he knows then he may get hit. Two more quick lefts by Vargas. Trinidad still can't find him. Vargas much more effective at range right now. This is a dominant round for young Vargas. A one-sided stanza in favor of the Mexican-American star. We got him little by little, we got him. He's, you heard him, you heard him, he's hurt. Keep going the same way, real lively, real smart. You gotta be smart. So as long as you step around, he can't set up and hit you. Can't you step around him? Make it look for you. People, if we combine our hands, we'll take it. 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 We
and destabilized him momentarily. And two more left hooks by Trinidad, land bit there and backed Vargas into the corner. Trinidad making a comeback now in round six after having been thoroughly dominated in three, four, and five. And Vargas, who was moving away early in the round, elects to trade with Trinidad and gets the better of him for the moment. What a round. Ooh. <laughs> Tito, he's got more problems than you How have. How do you feel, Tito? I'm, I'm going. You don't forget the jab is first, and then the left hook, and then the uppercut. That's the combination. The, the hook to the body is your main weapon. When, when you put pressure on him, put a lot of pressure on him and throw fast punches. Move, move to the other side where, where his jab is. You gotta put pressure, but quick, fast pressure. And you believe we're already halfway through the fight? Round six, CompuBox numbers, Trinidad 27 out of 52, Vargas 25 out of 59, more fireworks to begin the seventh. Quickly, Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, amazing. 55-55, three rounds apiece, Tito Trinidad definitely caught up in round six. I have the same score. Now Vargas got to understand that these latter rounds belong to Trinidad. You've got to oh, box him. Another up. low blow. This could be another point deduction for Trinidad. It would be very dispiriting if this great, great fight were to end on a disqualification. But Trinidad flirts with it now. The referee asked, are you all right? No way are you all right with that kind of punching power down below the belt. You're not okay. And another point deduction against Trinidad. So that's two points deducted. If form follows, it's Trinidad time. is you flirting know, with disqualification. Yeah, I was wondering if something happened. Jay Nady came over to talk to Trinidad. Trinidad may have said something inflammatory to him because it didn't look at that moment that Nady was going to deduct a point, but he got, he, he sort of got flushed and angry. That, that well, I'm not certain if he can even speak Spanish, Larry, and Trinidad only speaks Spanish. And there's the punch, which was right along the belt line, but the way Vargas reacted, he certainly felt it was a low blow. Yeah, Here's another look. There. It's tender down there anyway. Now they're back to fighting in the ring. Vargas has taken shorter and shorter breaks on the three interruptions for low blows. Trinidad is starting to cut off the round, cut off the ring. These are the Trinidad rounds. Vargas had better box out of them for two rounds. If he can only just box for a couple of rounds, just box. You look at the three low blows so far, and you remember that David Reed offered this piece of advice to Vargas. He said, Trinidad will do anything to win the fight. And Vargas, he's got to box, keep his back away from the ropes, and box. If he takes this fight to the center of the ring, he can do it easily, but stay away from the rope. Trinidad has been in these positions before, knows how to pull it out in the last round. The relentlessness of Felix Trinidad, coming and coming, firing with both hands. Power shot, power shot, power shot. Try to stay away from me, I'm coming forward. That's Felix Trinidad. He chops with that right hand as though it's a hammer. Doesn't just throw it out there as a straight right hand, he throws it out there and then chops with it. Trinidad's got the best right hand on the scene now. Vargas better keep boxing and keep something in front of Trinidad. Don't let him just follow you around. Jab him, jab him. He's caught the rhythm, the rhythm of uh, Trinidad now. He's going to expect him to bob and weave and throw something back himself now, Vargas. Looking for a left hook. Oh, 
little short with the right draw. Now he lands one All in the night he's been waiting for that rhythm shot, but you just can't take the power that Trinidad has and then wait to get a shot. You've got to get off first. Trinidad reaching just a little with the jab. Vargas steps in, overshoots with a right hand. Trinidad with a left to the body. Those body punches pile up over the course of the fight for Felix. No, 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 no. Step out. This is when you start to respect your opponent. You got to throw two or three punches. This round, and then the next one, two or three punches, and put pressure. You got to throw combination of two and three. Your jab first, but you got to throw three punches at least. We're going to win with the uppercut and the hook. And when you get in, make sure your hands are up. You always come in with the jab. Always work the jab in the front. Are you okay? Don't let him get a breather. Don't give him a second chance. the instructions from Trinidad's corner. Stay on top of him. In round seven, Trinidad had the CompuBox numerical advantage, but of course he had a point deducted for a low blow. Harold, how do you have it now? Okay, Jim. Three, three, one even because round seven becomes an, e an even round when Felix Trinidad won the round but lost the point on a low blow. I got a comment, Jim. I think the fight's being over-officiated. I would hate like heck to see a fight won or lost because of nonsense point deductions. You don't take a guy to a corner, talk to him for five minutes, and deduct the point. That's a joke. If you're going to deduct the point, you do it immediately when he gets when he throws the low blow, and it's all there is to it. A letterman memo to Jay Nady, which I'm sure Nady will be reading in the next few days. The Trinidad is back on the ball of his right foot again, and, and uh, Barker stands right in front of him. Once you see him get that foot planted, you got to get away. It appears now that Trinidad has moved back into some semblance of flow and control. And he's getting closer to Fernando, trying to press the issue and make his punching power the big advantage again. And sometimes you gotta be careful telling your fighter to go, keep going, keep pressing the guy, especially a boxer who knows how to punch backwards, going backwards. Which Vargas does. Vargas knows how to set himself on the move. He has this look of a child on his face, but let me tell you, there's some mean stuff there. Oh, this is a man's fight. It was promised as a macho battle, and it's been a good left to the body by Vargas. A left hook to the body that made Trinidad stop for a second. He knows it hurt him, too. Excellent. There it is again. Vargas was on the belt line with that one. Trinidad comes back with a right, right on the chin. That left hook is good for Vargas. If he gets and invests some more in there, he can make things happen. Trinidad trying to take a deep breath because that right side hurt from that left hook. And there's another one by Vargas. And this time he doubles the left hook upstairs. And Nady steps in and pulls him away just as Vargas was doing damage. There's a warning to Vargas now for low blows. Well, let me tell you, I didn't see anything low. Yeah, there was a little bit of a low blow. He sensed, as you said, George, that for the moment Trinidad was hurting the body and he went after it. He hit him again in the same spot right above the, the, the trunk line there. Body punching turning the tide again in favor of Fernando Vargas here in round number eight. Trinidad is protecting his right side now I'm telling you. Folks, this that is, is that's low. That was low. This Ten is. seconds left in the round now. They come down the stretch of the round and Vargas momentarily hurt because he stops and thinks for a second and whenever he stops Trinidad takes advantage of him lose concentration this is world-class stuff folks the, the nose is not bleeding you got a deep in deep breath that's what you need one more deep breath raise your hand we're fine 
We're going fine. The fight is, the fight is shot, but he's feeling your punches. We are okay now. How do you feel, Tito? Feel fine. You gotta throw more than one punch. Make it two and bob and weave. You gotta use you, you gotta use your intelligence and be swift. You gotta be quick. Round eight was one of the most even rounds of the foul of the bout. By CompuBox numbers, Vargas 27 of 58, Trinidad 24 of 47, Trinidad with an 18-14 edge in power shots. It could be a round on which the scorecards could turn because that round could have gone to either guy. Vargas, wherever he stands, still for a moment and look at Trinidad too much. Trinidad picks up that right foot and he comes right down the middle with that right hand. Big left hook by Vargas as Trinidad leaned in. Fernando thinks he's found something with the body punching. He's trying to set it up again. His corner told him to bob and weave a little bit. Trinidad is a little tall. He can't bend in the waist as easy as Vargas. Uppercut attempt by Vargas. Left hook landed on the chest. Trinidad missing with two rights. Manages to catch a piece of Vargas with the left. Trinidad now should reestablish his jab. Get back to the left jab, Trinidad should be the message from the corner. He's got a big jab. When Vargas hit him with a jab, nothing happens. But when Trinidad lands one jab, Vargas' head goes all the way back. Nady tells Trinidad not to pull Vargas' head down. They've done a wonderful job in Felix Trinidad's corner, keeping that right eye open. The, his corner has always done well with the swelling. He hasn't blown his nose as like he did in the Delahaya fight. Vargas is getting really brave now throwing uppercuts. You want to make sure you throw uppercuts you're in the middle of the ring. A right hand from distance momentarily wobbles Vargas. Another combination by Trinidad. Vargas grabs and holds. Another big right hand by Trinidad. Vargas in trouble. He stands and fires with the left. Championship rounds traditionally have belonged to Felix Trinidad. He's hammering Vargas here. Oh, that left hook to the body by Trinidad. Another left to the body by Vargas. And that backs Trinidad up momentarily. That's what you want, Trinidad. You want to back him away. Make another him back up. To the body by Make Vargas. him back up. And another left to the body by Vargas. He stops Trinidad's momentum by raking Trinidad to the ribs. Right here, right here, it's toughness of Vargas against the skill and punching power. He want to mix it up, Vargas does. Trinidad. He's smiling. He's like, I'm going to keep it up. This is the strength of both fighters going at each other. This was Vargas' promise. I'm not going to back away. I'm not the kind of fighter who will run. I'll stand with him. I'll trade with him. I'll stick with him all the way. That's what Vargas does as he comes down the stretch in round nine. Boy, it's getting rough for Vargas. Standing and applauding both fighters. When you step in, you hurt him. When you step back and bend over, he fires the right. Do not move to the right. Do not bend over to the right. There. Don King is having a conversation with the commissioners at this point. Now that shouldn't be a promoter talking to the commissioners. Let's put some grease on him. Tito. Don't, don't, don't get out of control. When you hurt him, don't lose control. Take it easy. Vargas took some heavy shots there, and he spent a lot of himself, I felt, in recovering. The question now is, how much does he have left going into these last three rounds? How good was the ninth round? They both landed 32 punches by CompuBox estimation, and 54 of the total 64 were power shots. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Jay. Uh, Jim, five, three, one even. 
84, 82, Tito Trinidad. Uh, Jim, I got to tell you, most referees will disqualify you after they take away three points. I don't think Nady will do it in this fight. But in any case, Tito Trinidad, in my eyes, red drops eight and nine in a toe-to-toe -to -toe action. I thought he had punched him. He won on a clean punch. Oh, yeah, and that gave him a two-point lead. I think he's ahead two points with three rounds to go. Harold, both rounds were very close. I have it even. I gave the last round to Vargas. I think Harold has done a good job this time. It's hard to take your emotion out and score a fight like this. He's done a good job. Vargas is not standing on the right side of Trinidad. Trinidad's eyes are about swollen shit. You want to stay over there, he's got to protect it. Stay over there, don't lean back to his left hook at all. Well, Fernando Vargas' left eye is beginning to swell dramatically, too, as the result of the right-hand punishment he took in the last round. So now it's Trinidad's right eye that's swelling. Vargas' left eye. And they stand and trade again. Trinidad with bigger power when they go face-to-face. -face. Trinidad has been in this position in the latter rounds before. He's a long way from home. He's got to go for the knockout. You think Trinidad has to go for the knockout? He has to go for the knockout. When you're this far away from home, you just can't take any chances that you're going to win this thing on points. Yeah, but just remember, George, he got that close, controversial decision over uh, Oscar De La Hoya right here. When some people thought that De La Hoya couldn't conceivably lose a decision in Vegas. All to the body goes Trinidad with left hook. Right now, Trinidad appears to be the stronger of the two. And he's not backing up, throwing hard shots. One of the judges for this fight, Glenn Hamada, was also a judge for Trinidad De La Hoya, and he had that fight 114-114. You're looking at another extremely close fight tonight. And a one-point deduction for Vargas. And the Trinidad fans go wild. Remember, there have already been two-point deductions against Trinidad. I think that was a make-up call by Nady. That, that should not have been counted as a foul or a serious foul. I said earlier, I saw Don King leaning over, talking with the commissioners, doing a boxing match, a promoter. That's not a good, that's not a good thing to do. Do you want to guess that Don was saying Vargas is throwing low punches too? He probably was, and then you caution your referee, if you're a good commission, to be equal here. And that's not a bad for Don King, but it's bad to, uh, it doesn't look good. Flip Homansky ultimately grabbed King and tried to lead him away good, from good. Glenn Carano and Dr. Elias Ghanem when King was leaning over Carano and Ghanem to try to make his point. Mark Ratner, the executive director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission, was two seats away. Meanwhile, they're still busting each other face to face in the ring as round 10 comes to a close and the crowd is on its feet again. Okay, deep in breath, deep breath, deep breath. He's dead, he's dead with the jab you got him. He's got it, he's, he's, he's yours, he's got his mouth open and he's tired. Don't let, don't let him get away now. You gotta use your intelligence, Fernando. When, and, and you gotta put the pressure, but you gotta put fast, quick. Don't stand right in front of him. Here's a look at the low blow call, Larry. Yeah, it was low. It was a little low on the border, but nothing that it just really grazed him. <laughs> Didn't look, I don't think it would have been called if he hadn't previously penalized Trinidad. Well, and also be, Vargas had some other low blows in the preceding round. Right. Be that as it may, it may be that right now Vargas either has to win the last two rounds or score a knockdown or a knockout to win the fight. Yeah, I think Vargas is the one who needs the knockout because that was a big round for Trinidad numerically and he got the point deduction. So in all likelihood, Trinidad should be ahead on the scorecards now. That's my take. Vargas is doing a good job, but he's just got to stay out of the exchanges. If he just uses quickness, jab, hook, stay out of the way. Beat Felix to the punches, but don't get into the exchanges. He is not the most powerful. It's been evident tonight. Now, Trinidad has definitely had the edge in power. Well, then how's he going to win the fight, George? 
Well, you just hit him, hit him, hit him, move out of the way. Hit him, hit him, hit him, move out of the way. And win the last two rounds and hope that's good enough? That's right. Win the round. But don't, you can do it, hit him, but don't get into the exchanges. He throws his left hook, you out of there. You see how he hits him with a jab, gets out of the way? Now get out of the way, and he should be doing now, which he did. This has been another showcase for the relentlessness of Felix Trinidad. Sure, he doesn't do a lot of different things in there, but the one thing he does, he does with passion, commitment, pride, and absolute determination all the time. Try to match my will. That's what Felix Trinidad says to his opponents, and he's been saying it to Vargas down the stretch of this fight. He knows how to go forward, and he, he uses it. He's aggressive. Some fellas... They only do it when they have to go forward. But this Trinidad is a go forward puncher. He takes your heart, George. He takes your heart. He hasn't taken Vargas' heart yet, but that would Vargas be hard to be do. Smart. Vargas has a ton of heart. Just remember, guys, this fight was almost over in the first minute. And here we are with a minute to go in the 11th round. That's all you need to know about Vargas' <laughs> heart. In case you missed the beginning, Vargas was down twice in the first minute and a half of the bout, but survived. Now the exchanges, Felix Trinidad is going to get the best of the exchanges. Vargas has got to stay away from trying to mix it up. Mix it up. Do what you're going to do first and get out of the way. Now get out of the way, he should be doing now. Good left hook inside by Vargas. Vargas with a momentary flash of offense, but Trinidad freezes him with a hard right hand to the jaw. Straight punches by Trinidad right up the middle. They get there quick. There you go, Vargas. He's beating him to the punch, and he's rattling him. He's got his heart. He's got his power. Don't get into the exchanges. What a battle. And again, they're on their feet. You're going to give him a beating in this round. Deep breathing. Deep breathing. Take a deep breath. We got to get that water. Let's put some Vaseline on him. We need a round. The last round. You're fine. We're conscious of what we're doing. Are you conscious? Yes. Give me some water. Fernando Vargas has bitten off more than he can chew, in the opinion of many, but he has chewed it, and he has to chew it again in this last round to pull it out. But Felix Trinidad has been outlanding Vargas down the stretch and with bigger firepower most of the time. Vargas Harold Letterman, how do you have it going to the okay, final Okay, Jim, I absolutely agree with you on that power towards the end of the fight. Six, four, one even, 103, 100, Felix Tito Trinidad. Jim, there's no question, out of the last four rounds, Tito Trinidad has released three. Down goes Vargas on a big left hook. And up he gets in a two seconds. And now it's abundantly clear. Fernando Vargas must score a knockout or he's lost this fight. Down goes Fernando again. He's seriously hurt. He doesn't have his wits about him. He is reacting simply from instinct and courage. He's out of it. He can't see Trinidad. He's about to get knocked out. Barring a miracle here, it's going to be a closing knockout for Tito. Fernando trying to survive, fires a couple of punches, and holds on like a skilled veteran. He's a veteran. And that'll do it. The third right hand, the third knockdown of the round, a huge victory for Tito Trinidad. He closes the show like the champion he is. What a fight. What a fight. Give the 
people what they want. Did they get their money's worth tonight, George? He gave it to them. And also did Barkas. He also did as much. What a champion. What a performance by Trinidad. Start to finish. Braveheart. Braveheart all the way. Never thought that Trinidad could do what he did tonight. No way. He beat a, a superior boxer. Left jab and power punches, getting up off the canvas, being in trouble, recuperating. I didn't think he had it. He underlined his trademark, George, two-fisted power, relentless determination. I never thought he could do it. And he had to back up a few times, and he was still effective. Let's take a look at the three knockdowns in the 12th round with which Trinidad finished Vargas and finished the fight. Knockdown number one. Another brilliant left hook, typical of so many that Trinidad had landed throughout the fight, typical of the left hooks with which he began all this in creating two knockdowns back in round number one. A third look at another perfect left-hand shot on the button by Felix Trinidad. And then seconds later, the second knockdown and the one that made it clear that Vargas would need a near miracle just to finish the fight. Another clean shot with the left hook for Trinidad. And then finally, the third knockdown, almost an anti-climax at that point, as a wobbly Vargas simply could not muster the skill and the will to stay afoot against Trinidad's assault. And a merciful Jay Nady not bothering to count, but rather stepping in to end the onslaught and spare the brilliant young talent any further punishment at the hands of the devastating Trinidad. 39th win of Felix Trinidad's career. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official details of the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. One minute, 33 seconds in round number 12. He's the winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated. And now the WBA and IBF 154-pound world champion, Felix Tito. box numbers it was Trinidad who came roaring down the stretch to overtake Vargas in total punches landed and he landed at a brilliant 50% connect rate throughout the fight power punches the heart of the story as it usually is when Trinidad fights left hand and right hand power 43 more power punches landed dominance in this category that ultimately led to the knockout victory and let's go to Larry Merchant with the brilliant Tito Trinidad all right Tito congratulations was that the great fight you anticipated yeah, it was a great fight I expected. I told everybody it's going to be a, a great fight, but I knew I was going to win. Is that the toughest fight you've ever been in? Is that the toughest fight you've ever been in? Bueno, ha sido una ha sido una pelea bien fuerte. Valga es un gran peleador, un peleador fuerte. Pero yo siempre vengo bien preparado y se lo demostré. Yeah, it was it was the toughest fight, and it, it was a tough fight. But Vargas is a good fighter, but I came well prepared. You knock him down two times very quickly in the first round. Did you think the fight was over then? Lo tumbaste dos veces en el primer round. ¿Creíste tú que ya se había terminado la pelea? Pensaba que sí, pensaba que la pelea iba a durar poco, pero él él tiene él trajo una buena condición y me pudo lograr los dos asaltos. I I thought the fight was going to be over quick, but you got to give credit to his stamina, his conditioning. That's why he lasted. So you were surprised that he was able 
to find a way to survive that first round. Yeah, it surprised me, but he came with good conditioning, and I knew that with my good, good conditioning, even if it would, it would take 12, I would win. He started to get into the fight in the third and fourth round. He knocked you down. How badly were you hurt? Eh, eh, Vargas comenzó a estar a entrar en la pelea en el tercer y cuarto round. Te tumbó. Estabas herido. Estabas golpeado. Bueno, me dio un buen, un gran gancho y que la me derribó, pero yo estaba en una gran condición y gracias a Dios pude acabar la pelea por no acabar el round 12. He hit me with a good left hook and he hurt me a little bit with my condition and I, I withstood it. You were you were penalized several times for low blows. Do you think the referee was right to do that? Te multaron dos o tres puntos por por los los golpes bajos. ¿Tú crees que el referee tenía razón hacer eso? El último golpe que le di para mí posiblemente los primeros dos, pero el último golpe no. Le me me quitaron un punto injustamente. And maybe the first two times that I hit him low was all right, but the third time I thought it was unjust to lose a point then. Did your eye bother you through the fight? Was it ever a serious problem? Tu ojo te molestó durante la pelea y fue algún problema que te causó eso? No, me molestó un poco sí en el round. Al principio de los primeros rounds sentí que me me dio con con el ojo, con el dedo el dedo pulgar dentro del ojo y se me borró la la vista un poco, pero yo soy un gran peleador. It, it bothered me a while, and I got hit, hit in the, uh, I thought it was the thumb, but uh, I knew I would win, and I'm a great champion. Going into the 12th round, did you feel you needed a knockout to win, or was it just there because he was coming to try to knock you out? Eh, para el final del 12th round, ¿tú sentiste tú alguna vez que necesitabas un knockout, o era que el, el knockout vino? No, yo, yo iba a ganar como quiera por la edición, pero gracias a Dios, y que siempre está conmigo, I don't think I needed an account in the 12th round. I was winning the fight all the way, and thank God and it, it came. Do you think that there will come a time when you will fight him again? Everything is possible. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to Don King and see what happens. Thank you very much, Tito. Having maintained his trademark composure in the ring immediately following the fight, Felix Trinidad was, unexpectedly to most, considerably more emotional in his post-fight news conference. Uh, my padre, to my father. Please uh, excuse the champion. Please, uh, he wants to go to the hotel now. In the immediate aftermath of the fight, Fernando Vargas was not available to be interviewed in the ring. He was taken immediately to a nearby hospital for precautionary examination. But a few days later, our Larry Merchant caught up with Vargas in Southern California. Fernando, what were your impressions of the fight looking back? Taking nothing away from Felix Trinidad, I think he's a great champion, a great fighter. Um, his experience, I think the experience that he was talking about was trying to be a little dirty. You know, um, I got, I heard him in the fourth round, and when I knocked him down, and and um, when he got up, he, I mean, the first thing he did was, you know, hit me in the balls. You know what I'm saying? And um. Two other times, you know, he, I mean, hit me again, and, you know, what can I say? You know, I take nothing away from him. He was a better man that day. You had an aura of invincibility about you. You felt that v very deep inside you. Is this a shock to you, having come out of a fight that way? It's a shock to me because it's not something that I wanted to come out, you know, like this, but, you know, it's not the way I expected it, and I don't think if, you know, we would have been playing fair, you know, I, I would have been, I would have came out like this, um, but, you know, I give him all the credit in the world, he was a better man. Are you afraid that this is going to be perceived as an alibi? No, I mean, people can say what they want to say, you know, 
I, I'm giving him all the respect in the world. I'm saying that he's the, he's uh, you know, he was a better man that night. He beat me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not making a. I'm not making complaints or anything, but I'm back, saying... Just to go back, when you knocked him down in that fourth mm -hmm. round, did you feel, okay, now I'm there, now I'm getting him, and now, the, now I'm going to well, get when him I out? Try to come, when I try to come with something, I got hit in the balls, definitely. I mean, that's... I mean, I, uh, he, he just did a... He had a great game plan, you know? Um, he got me out of my game plan. And what impressed you about him as a fighter, being in there with him? I think he's... Um, even though... You know, he gets hurt, he, he can come back. I think that that's impressed me. He's tougher than, than people no, think. I th well, I think he's tough. I always thought he was tough, so, you know, that didn't surprise me about him being tough, but, you know, him being hurt and him being able to use his head and, and knowing, I guess, tricks and, tricks and uh, I guess, and the experience of so the game. So was it premature to take that fight, as many people claim, or, so. or are you glad you've had the experience, I'm even if glad, it was a hard I'm, one? I'm glad I had the experience, and I just want to show the world that you know, I'd love to the rematch, and hopefully he wants it. So even though the people around you, main events and so forth, feels that you ought to come back on a slower path, you want the rematch immediately. I want it badly. I just feel that um, if everything, I mean, if things didn't happen the way they did, I just feel that I would have been able to be a lot fresher, a lot quicker. I mean, I take nothing away from him. He did what he had to do to win, and he was a better man that night, and, you know, uh, I think he's a, a so, great fighter. So are you going to campaign among your people I want to rematch. tell him you want to right back? I want a rematch, absolutely, and that's that's how I feel. You know, um, hopefully we can do it, you know. I don't know how he feels about it. If you got up from those knockdowns in the first round, that you'll get up from this in your career? Absolutely. I think that... You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a warrior. I feel that I'm a fighter in life and, and in the ring. You know, I'm, you know, when I step into the ring, I give everything I have. And when in life, I give everything I have. So, you know, uh, this isn't going to get me down. Um, I'm looking forward to showing the world that Fernando Vargas can come back from this, from adversity. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fighter that's going to that's gonna just uh, sit down and, and, uh, and cry over this. No, I'm going to go out there and take care of business and, and go out there and, and regain my championship. Having celebrated only his 23rd birthday a few days after the fight, Fernando Vargas can still be expected to have a glorious future in boxing. He's already talking enthusiastically about his next assignment in the ring. So all in all, boxing enjoys its best big moment in quite a while. A fireworks fight, which surely elevated the reputation of Felix Trinidad, and perhaps for the general public, that of Fernando Vargas as well. And in a sport whose big pay-per-view moments have not always served it well in recent years, this was a fight for boxing fans to hold on to and remember. A fitting ending to a fight with so many fireworks, Trinidad not willing to settle for the decision, punctuates it with a signature Trinidad knockout. George, we've seen it so many times in team sports. Team falls behind, makes the big effort to reel in the other team, then fades again down the stretch. That seemed to happen to Vargas, and you suggested midway through that the low blows might affect him, did they? had a great effect on him. And I said early on, because he was, uh, Trinidad was able to land those low blows on the hip right on the thigh there. And that's what really takes it out. If you're going to depend on your feet, your legs, and a lot of rounds, you're going to need that. And he lost it. But that's not the reason he lost that boxing match. He got into exchanges with a devastating puncher, and Trinidad knocked him out. The best man won. Inarguably, the greatest performance of his already brilliant career. And Larry, it was step one in a very ambitious agenda. He said he would knock out Vargas. He's done it. Now he looks ahead to bigger things. Yeah, he does because he's the type of athlete who wants to challenge himself and, like Napoleon, challenge history as well. He wants to move up to be a full-blown 160-pound middleweight. The best middleweight in the world is Bernard Hopkins. It would be great if he fought him, but we may see him against William Joppy, who is considered the next best middleweight in the world. Wouldn't it be terrific if he waited for, at 154 pounds, for Shane Mosley to move up from welterweight, the two, num the two best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world? And then, of course, at the end of the raid, Mo, there's Roy Jones. Felix Trinidad uh, proved his greatness in this fight, that he's not only a great talent, but going up a kid against a kid with tremendous will, determination, courage, he proved he had all of those things himself, plus 
that talent. And now young Fernando Vargas, so full of self-confidence, so full of himself, has his first taste of real adversity from which to recover. Can he? No doubt about it. The brown bummer. He's been devastated. Even literally uh, Max Mellon, the German veteran, by the way, mopped the floor with him. With Joe but Lewis. With Joe Lewis. Chappie was able to train her, scrape him up, pile him up, bag him up, take him home, and brought him back to even be a better fighter. As a matter of fact, the greatest of all time. Little piece of history, Fernando Vargas, from which you can take solace, the story of Joe Lewis and his terrific comeback. Meanwhile, we get to come back after the first of the year, January 20, back here in Las Vegas at another event center. Diego Corrales at 130 pounds against Floyd Mayweather Jr., the boxer Mayweather against the puncher Corrales. Could we see some of the same kinds of fireworks there? Well, what we know is that the only guy in the world probably who can beat Corrales is Mayweather. <laughs> and the only guy in the world who could beat Mayweather probably is Corrales. That has the makings of a real fight. But we demanded a great fight out of Trinidad and Vargas and got it, and I'm not going to press my luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but what a year it's been here on HBO Boxing with fights like Barrera Morales and Mosley De La Hoya and Vargas Cuarte, and now, of course, this fabulous matchup between Felix Trinidad and Fernando Vargas. We thank you very much for being with us to see it, some of you surely seeing it for the second time and looking for other opportunities to see it down the road. And we look forward to being back with you as we continue our tour of the boxing world. On HBO, look for these upcoming shows. On December 16, KO Nation returns with lightweight champ Paul Spatafora against Billy Irwin. January 13, Boxing After Dark returns, and so does heavyweight Michael Grant. He takes on Corey Sanders. Next week, tune in for another edition of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories, a look at Reggie Strickland, the world's worst boxer. And each Thursday, tune to Inside the NFL. Join Dan Marino and the rest of the gang for predictions and highlights on the show the pros watch. Later this month, HBO Sports of the 20th Century presents Playing the Field, Sports and Sex in America. It's a documentary which explores how sex has influenced the world of sports and how the world of sports has helped shape this country's ideas on sexuality. Premiering on the 20th here on HBO. And in February, HBO Sports will premiere another documentary, Do You Believe in Miracles? The story of the 1980 U.S. hockey team. It was 21 years ago when the world witnessed one of the most astonishing upsets in sports history at the Lake Placid Winter Winter Games, a group of amateur U.S. hockey players upset the great Soviet Union Red Army dynasty. Coming your way in February, only on HBO. Now for the entire HBO crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from Las Vegas. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Rick Bernstein. Trinidad vs. Vargas was produced by Dave Harmon and directed by Mark Payton. Associate producers Max Siegel, Thomas Odelfelt, and Michael Whalen. Assistants to the producer Thomas Huffine and George Jacobic. Production manager John McCalley. Technical supervisor Bob Hunter. And the technical director was Doug Gitts. of HBO Sports, the network of champions. Next on HBO. Welcome to the place where virtual sex becomes reality. If you think it's erotic on the net, you'll get caught up in it here. Sex Bites 1. Next on HBO. In its first season. Work. We can hold them off. Maybe we'll have a chance of being rescued. 
Come on, boys. Let's go up and dig in. Grace, do you really think they'll...